All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I think we're going to have some more folks joining as well. Um, I'm Carolyn Merrick, Program Coordinator here at the Center. Thanks for coming to this exciting part one, um, Scarf Tying Magic with Bobby Jean Thompson. Bobby Jean is a longtime Center member. Uh, she is a very successful entrepreneur, owned her own image consulting business, and um, I just found out she's written 10 books, but the book that we're most interested in now and today is her book, Scarf Time Magic, which she wrote in 1988. And um, she's going to show us, Bobby Jean is going to show us all kinds of scarf ties that, um, sorry, there's all these people I need to admit into the room. Um, and then um, probably uh, 35, 40 minutes, five, 45 minutes, and then there'll be time for question and answer at the end. And um, like I said, this is the first of two classes. So this one will be demonstrate, demonstrating scarf ties with Bobby Jean. And then we'll do, um, sorry, let me just, okay. Um, and then after that, um, if you want to learn how to do those ties and you're like, oh, I can't remember that. Bobby Jean has given me uh, the pages to her, of her book that's now not in print. And I'd be happy to send you those pages uh, with all the different knot ties and knots that Bobby Jean's gonna go over. So what you would do is just email me, carolyn at thecenterseville.org and I'll put that in the chat. And I will send you the um, Seville dot org and I'll send you the link to that and then hopefully you can join us next time and we'll we'll uh, we can do the ties together so all right without further ado I'm going to turn you over to Bobby Jean thank you so much oh thank you Carolyn uh, she's already introduced me I'm Bobby Jean Thompson I have written many books on the image consulting and had a business in Seminole Square and Arlington Boulevard for over 30 years. I have retired and my book has retired. My best-selling book, Scarf Time Magic, has retired. But anytime anyone talks about scarves, I'm always so excited to share what I know, what I've written, and it's just good to be with you. I want to thank the center for inviting me to do this Zoom class. I'd like to thank Clay, who actually inspired me and kept asking me, when would I do this? And I certainly want to thank my, my daughter, who has actually gone through and through and through suggestions and helped me with this Zoom class. I never thought at this age I would be doing a Zoom class, <laughs> but I did, of course, uh, have many seminars and uh, I actually trained the image consultants uh, back in the 80s and 90s at Disney World. So I've trained over 3,000 image consultants, which was a very happy time in my life. So this is now a happy time. What I want to do, of course, as Carolyn said to you, is to show you some of the ties out of scarf tying magic. This is a book that I wrote. It is out of print now. Uh, however, a couple of people told me they found it on Amazon. Uh, someone even told me, my neighbor told me she found it in a bookstore. But as Carolyn said to you, she has copied the images from the book of the different scarf ties I'll be doing and I have given permission for her to email these to you upon your request. So, aside from looking at a, an illustration and finding out how to tie a scarf, I want to show you 
next and also next week, October the 7th, I will be inviting you to come back to the Zoom class with a rectangle scarf and a square scarf, or if you don't have both of those, just come with a scarf and we will do the ties that I will be demonstrating today. And we will go step by step so that you can tie one on as we go through tying together. When you're looking to select a scarf, you also want to consider seven different categories in selecting a scarf. Of course, you are going to look at the size of the scarf. You're going to look at the shape of the scarf. Is it a rectangle? Is it a, an oblong or a rectangle or a square? And another very important consideration is the color, the color of the scarf. Many of you know, I, I know there was uh, someone here that used to come into my shop and I think you even had your color analysis done. <laughs> Raise your hand. And many people have asked, well, what is color analysis? When I would do a color analysis consultation, it's selecting colors that are best suited for your skin tone, your eye color, and your hair color. And with that consultation, we would go through and actually categorize a, an individual as a winter, summer, spring, or autumn. And I happen to be a winter and these are some of my best colors. And there is, of course, the summer, which are cool colors that are muted. And then there is the autumn color analysis. And the autumn colors are warm colors that are muted. And then of course there is the spring colors that are warm, but they're very vibrant. And then of course, from that color analysis, you would actually leave with your swatch palette of your best colors. And then you can take this swatch palette and go shopping with it if you don't remember all of your colors. Aside from selecting the scarf with the colors, you also want to consider the quality of the scarf, the fabric of the scarf. Is it heavy? Is it a wool scarf? Of or perhaps a cotton or silk scarf. And then there's another category of selecting the scarf that is called, I like to call it expression of style. The expression of style, are you a dramatic or a, someone that would be dressing as a town and country, a casual? There are different levels of expression of style. And then, of course, the last thing that you want to consider is what is your lifestyle? The lifestyle, are you playing tennis? What type? When I used to play tennis, I would always wear a scarf, and the scarf was actually used to wipe away the sweat. <laughs> um, you know, scarves have been around since before Christ. And men would wear scarves primarily, as I said, to wipe away the sweat, to keep themselves clean. Of course, women would wear scarves to 
be adorned with their wardrobe. So now what we want to do is to talk about three basic scarf folds and also three basic types of scarves. And I'm going to show you these different shapes and we'll talk about the different sizes of scarves. Probably the most popular shape of a scarf is the square. And the square scarf comes in many different sizes. The small little square scarf, I have several small square scarves, but it's really quite nice to take a small scarf and tie it around a handbag. This happens to be an 18 inch scarf. And this is another 18 inch scarf. So it's just a way of creating a little pizzazz with your scarves. And then of course, you have a square scarf that is 20 inches wide. This happens to be the Mona Lisa. A 20 inch scarf that is a square, you would fold it into a triangle and I'll show you the different folds in a few moments. Um, and the 20 inch scarf would be one that you'd probably just go right around your neck. It's not one that would flow too often. This is another square scarf. This happens to be a designer scarf that I purchased for my mother. And it's a very special Bill Blast scarf. This is a 34 inch scarf. And the 34 inch scarf that is a square is probably the most popular. And then we have, this is actually a 36 inch scarf. This is a little heavier silk. Many times people will say, oh, what can I give you for your birthday? Well, a scarf is something that I always want. And a friend brought me this beautiful silk scarf from Paris. And it's a heavier square. And then you can go even to a larger square. This happens to be a 52 inch square scarf. It's made of silk and the design is a lot of makeup items, which of course I used to sell a lot of makeup in my shop and this is one that is quite nice because it's large. And now let's talk about the oblong, or I like to call it a rectangle scarf, which it is a rectangle. This is a beautiful silk scarf that is a velvet cut. This particular scarf is 66 inches, which can be also used as a shawl. And um, as I said, the rectangle scarf can go from a 34 inch rectangle to of uh, this happens to be all I think it's a 77 inch rectangle which once again can be used as a shawl and this is another rectangle this is a hand cut velvet teen scarf.
scarf that is actually a polyester. There's another <laughs> rectangle. I have a lot of rectangle scarves. This one is an 80 inch rectangle and it has a lot of little ripples which almost looks like a ruffle. My friend who I think is, I think she has joined us. I was looking to see Holly sent me this rectangle, which is 80 inches long and it's 60 inches wide. This works wonderfully well as an armadillo tie that I'll show you at the end. And thank you, Holly. I've used this so many times. This is another long rectangle. This particular one is an 80 inch scarf. We used to sell scarves in my shop. This is a hand painted silk. And of course, when a scarf didn't sell immediately, then I could acquire <laughs> another scarf. And the last rectangle I'm going to show you is one that'll keep you warm. This is a rectangle that is 130 inches long. And believe me, you can wrap yourself in this and get all tied up and be warm in the winter time. So I've now shown you the different shapes. I wanna show you three different folds. If you have, for example, a square scarf, and you'd like to make it into, for example, a bias shape, you lay this down on your table or your bed and you go from one end and bring it to the center and then take the other end and bring it to the center and then you fold it over on both sides and now you have a bias shape fold. And of course, um, the very easy fold for a square scarf is just folding it into a triangle. And that is by taking the two points, taking two points and folding it into a triangle. And also with a square, I want to show you if you need to make a rectangle out of a square, you have to actually do it with a larger square scarf. And how you do that is fold it in half, lay it down and fold it over and then fold it again and again. I'll show you a little later using this fold as an, I call the scarf tie the accordion. And I didn't tell you about the bias scarf. The bias scarf is a scarf that is very slenderizing and you don't really see the bias scarf very often. But the bias scarf is cut on the bias. I had 
a little board here to show you, but I'll show that to you later, maybe next week. It is actually taking the fabric and it is cut on the diagonal and that will make a bias scarf. And I like to take a bias scarf and, okay, here's my board. The, if you can see this, you would put how the fabric is put down and then it is cut on the diagonal, which will make a scarf into a bias shape. And the, the bias scarf is very slenderizing. And this happens to be one that is 90 per, let's see, it's 90 inches. So this is a very slenderizing scarf. And I'll show you how to do the snake with the bias scarf. And also in my book, at the very end, I actually show you an illustration of how to make a bias scarf out of seven inches of fabric. And I've made many bias scarves. This happens to be one that I made uh, recently. Uh, I had a skirt that was too long, so I cut off the bottom of the skirt, made a scarf, and then I had so much fabric left, I actually made a bracelet. And they, the bracelets, the scarf bracelets now are very popular. I've seen them so many different places and this is one, I didn't make this bracelet scarf, but it's showing you what a bracelet scarf is all about. Okay, now we've shown you the three basic folds, the three basic shapes of the scarves. Now I want to get into showing you some scarf ties. Do you know what the most important scarf tie is? It's nothing more than the square knot. Many of you probably have been tying the tie, thinking that it's a square knot, but I want to go over this with you because there are so many ties that come from the square knot. I'm using a rectangle or an oblong, put it around the back of the neck, and I'd like for you to memorize these few words. If you say these words each time, you'll be able to get a nice square knot. You take one end and you go right over left, up under, and tie. Most everyone can get the tie to this point, but then some sort of way it gets all twisted. But open it up, be sure that it's open up, and then you say left over right, up under and through the knot and tie. Then come back and open up the knot and you have a beautiful square knot. So it's right over left, up under and tie, then left over right, up under and through, and tie. Now from the square knot, what I'd like to do is to show you the one that I call the eye of the needle. I'm using a rectangle scarf once again. Bring it halfway. And after it's folded, 
put it around the back of the neck and go through the eye of the needle. Just pull the scarf through. If you like it tight around your neck, which that's the way I like to wear them, then you pull it up tight. If you don't like it tight, you just loosen it up. And then you can actually take one end of the scarf, bring it right around and tie. That's the eye of the needle. Now I'd like to show you one that I call the secret eye of the needle. You know, sometimes when you put your scarf on, it'll get out of place, it'll worm around your body. This secret eye of the needle is very secure. What you do is you take the fold, go across your body and pick up your bra strap. Now a fella wouldn't be able to do the secret eye of the needle, but we have an advantage by wearing an uncomfortable bra. Then what you do, you have this open eye of the needle, take the end of the scarf and feed it right through the fold. Then your scarf is totally secure. It doesn't move. You can bring the scarf to the front if you want, which I like to do is to take one to the front and one to the back. And it's totally secure. So that is the secret eye of the needle. Now, while I'm demonstrating these ties, what I'd like for you to do is to make note of perhaps one of your favorites or two or three of your favorites. And then next week, we will go through all of these ties together, as I said to you earlier, step by step. And we'll have question and questions and answer, and I'll answer anything that you might have question on. Now, from the secret eye of the needle, thank you, I'm going to do the dog cross. I see this quite frequently on a lot of people and it's so easy. And this is one that you can do anytime, anywhere with any type of primarily of a rectangle. Although you can do this with a square if you have folded it, if the square is large enough and you folded it into a bias. So take the scarf, the middle of the scarf around your neck and then pull the other end right around the back of your neck and you have the dog cross. If you don't like it tight around your neck, just pull it down. And I'm going to show you a little later what I do recommend. I've left the tag on some of these scarves, but I do recommend that you take your tag off. And I'll show you at a little later about being very careful <laughs> about taking the tag off. The dog cross can be worn this tie can be worn with many types of textures. And I actually borrowed this from my daughter. This is a very long rectangle and it's a heavier type of fabric. And you can use this it looks really nice over a coat uh, or a jacket. And 
you put this right around the back of your neck and then you cross it and pull it right around and you have another scarf tie. Once again, as I said, if you want to tie off the dog cross, then just pull it right under and this makes it a little more secure. Now, I want to show you the Duchess of Windsor. Many of you probably know that a fella wearing a tie will tie a full Windsor. That takes a little practice. I do have it illustrated in my book, but I want to show you the Duchess of Windsor. The Duchess of Windsor is used with a rectangle scarf. What you do is you put it right around the back of your neck, come a third of the way up on one end and tie a loose overhand knot. And you can make this as high or as low as you want. Then go to the other end, take your index finger, thumb, forefinger, go through this loose knot and pull your scarf through and guess what? You have tied the Duchess of Windsor. You know, I always say, leave it up to a female. She'll find an easier, better way of doing something that might be difficult. So this is the Duchess of Windsor. And now what we want to do is the fan. I call this particular tie the fan. It's probably my, it's probably my favorite tie. And many of you, uh, I'm sure were like I was watching the briefings for COVID-19, especially in uh, late February and March, the president would have a briefing and the highlight for me of the briefing was seeing Dr. Deborah Burks. She has been such an inspiration for wearing scarves and she would wear a new scarf or a, a different scarf every day for the briefings. Usually her ties, her scarf ties were very controlled, but they were always perfect. And one day she had on a scarf that I have. We used to sell echo scarves in, our, in my shop. And this is an echo scarf that is called the cherry blossom. And she was wearing this scarf, which is beautiful. And I want to show you how to tie the fan top with this particular scarf. Put it right around your neck. Once again, you're coming up a third of the way on the scarf and tie a loose overhand knot like you did for the Duchess of Windsor. And from that point, you come to the other end of the scarf. Do you remember those little paper fans we made in grade school? You would fold it back and forth, back and forth. Of course, we didn't have air conditioning in those days. 
that's what we're going to do. We're going to fold the other end of the scarf back and forth. So you take your finger and thumb, your forefinger and your thumb, and what you're doing is you're folding this back and forth, back and forth. Now, if you want, if you don't want it tight around your neck, you would not do many folds. I like it a little tighter around my neck. So I'm going to go back and forth several times. Then after you've made this fold, drop one end of the scarf and then pick up these folds. Take your other hand, come through this loose knot with your finger, forefinger, and go through the loose knot. Be sure to only go halfway through because if you go all the way through, you've spoiled your fan. Then take your tail, well, <laughs> the tail of the scarf, I mean, <laughs> and you tie this knot. You can certainly wear it to the front, or I like to put it to the side, and then you have a beautiful cow neckline with whatever you're wearing. So this is the fan. And sometimes what I'll do when I tie the fan, I'll actually put it onto a mannequin that I have in my wardrobe and I'll just put it right over the mannequin so that the next time I wear it, then I can just put it right around my neck. So just put it right around the mannequin, right over here, and there it is. All right, now from the fan, what I want to do now is to show you a very simple tie that any of you can do. I call it the bando. The bando tie, I'm going to use a rectangle, but actually you can do this also with a square. And you take your scarf, put it right around the back of the neck, and you take a small little rubber band. You can actually purchase these. I actually purchased these, I think at Walmart in the hair department. Um, but before I ever found these, actually I would take the bands from my children's orthodontic <laughs> of when they were when they had braces and they were called the orthodontic bands. So you take the small little band, the rubber band between the three fingers, your thumb and your index finger, and you come about breast high and you put the rubber band right into the scarf and separate it. And you have a nice bow or once again, as you've heard me say, I like to put it up to the side. So anyone can do this. If you don't have the small little rubber bands, if I see you somewhere, I'll be happy to give you give you some because I have a whole bag full. From the bando, let's do a snake. You remember I mentioned this to you earlier. 
I like to use the bias scarf and I told you earlier, be sure to cut off your little tags and I'm going to show you how to do that. I left the tags on some of these purposely. But what you do with the snake is you just wind it up as a snake and this happens to be long enough that I can put it around my neck several times and then tie once again what is the most important tie that square knot right over left up under and tie left over right up under and tie also with the bias scarf if you have a pendant this is a pendant that was given to me. I collect owls, and this was a pendant given to me by Linda at the center. And I actually had this on last week when I went to the center at Belvedere. You take your bias scarf, pull it through, and then I always like to tie it so it'll be secure. But then you have a beautiful necklace, purely made with your bias scarf. Let me show you the accordion. You remember I told you earlier when I was folding the scarf, a square scarf, that I would show you how to make the accordion fold. And I'm doing this with a square scarf. Fold it in half, lay it down on your table, or your bed, and now you're going to just fold it right over. Just continue to fold. This I call the accordion. Just continue to fold, and then you have an accordion fold. You can put it around your neck, up under, the collar of your jacket, or just leave it as this. And of course, if you don't have, or if you don't want to do the accordion fold, you know, designers are making scarves into all kinds of different designs and shapes. This is an accordion scarf. And designers also have recently, without, within the past five years, come up with what they call the skinny scarf. And the skinny scarf is nice to put around your handbag or to tie the square knot around your neck. You know, with the buy a scarf you and i wore this the other night this is a bias scarf you can take this with your expression of style and put it right around a hat and my expression of style is dramatic <laughs> and then you can put this right around your hat and you have another way of wearing your bias scarf. From the accordion, let me show you now how to tie 
one that I call the banded. Using a square scarf, you take the square, this happens to be a very sheer square, and I wanted to show you just so that you could see how to do the banded with a, with a sheer scarf, but you can take any square scarf and do the banded. Take your square and fold it into a triangle. The triangle of taking two points, then you have this triangle. Take the fold of the triangle, you can put it over your nose. I want to talk to you and tell you how I'm doing this, so I'm going to put it right around the, my neck. Go to the back and tie. You remember what is the most important tie? The square knot. If you can't tie the square knot in the back, just loop it over, tie it, pull it right around to the front, and now I'm going to tie the square knot. And from this square knot, you've tied it secure, securely, and then you can pull it up over your nose, you and you look like a bandit, <laughs> you have a scarf made into a mask, or you can pull this down and you actually have a turtleneck right around your neck. And as I said, you can do this tie, the bandit, with any square scarf. And now I'd like to show you another one of my favorite scarves as I get the square knot untied. I'm going to show you one that, as I said, it's one of my favorites. It's called the bat wing. Here again, I have a square scarf. And this particular scarf is a holiday scarf with all types of ornaments. You have to lay your scarf down on the bed, on the table, and you fold it into a rectangle shape. Now you have four corners. And what you're going to do is to pick up diagonally two opposite corners. So you pick this corner up and diagonally across, you pick up the other corner and now you have two little bat wings. I call them bat wings. Take the fold and put it right around the back of the neck. Guess what we're going to tie? The square knot. So it's right over left, up under and tie. Then left over right, up, under, and through, and tie. Come back and open up the square knot, and now you have a beautiful collar. I have seen Dr. Burke's tie, a similar tie such as this. As I said to you earlier, most of her ties are very controlled, but I like to 
add a little softness, a little flow. You can put this knot to the side. Then you have a, almost a cow neckline. This is called the bat wing. Now I'd like to show you one that I call the butterfly tie. I used to do a lot of volunteer work when I had my shop for the Look Good Feel Better program, which is a program for females who have lost their hair. And uh, I would do this and then we would also have a full makeup session of actually putting your eyebrows on if if the person have been through chemotherapy and they lost their eyebrows. And these scars were given to me by the Look Good Feel Better program. And the scarves were designed by Oscar de la Rente. And I actually have two of the same scarf. And many times I like to have two of the same type of scarf. What you do is you take your scarf and fold it in half. This actually has a front and a back. So be sure that you have gone to the back side of the scarf. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And now you have the point so that you can tie that tight little knot. And what you do after you've tied the tight little knot, then you turn it right side out and pick up the opposite corners. And be sure that you have this folded the right way so that when you pick up the opposite corners, you have the butterfly. And then what you do is you tie the ends on the back of the neck as an overhand knot or the square knot. Then if you have a second scar, fold this into a triangle and put the fold right around the back of the neck, come up under the scarf. What am I going to tie? That square knot, I'm tying the square knot. And then you have actually a full outfit with the butterfly. And now what I want to show you is the armadillo. The armadillo is one that you make with a, a very large scarf. You remember this beautiful yellow scarf? You can do this with the scarf that Holly gave me. You can make the armadillo. I had the armadillo on earlier. And what you do is you take a large rectangle and you tie, you take the ends, both ends, and tie a tight little knot. Then you come to the other end mm -hmm. and you tie a tight little knot. And this is wonderful when you go to a restaurant especially and you need to cover mm -hmm. up your arms, your shoulders, because the air conditioning is coming right down on your shoulders, and then you have another wrap. Also, before we go, I want to show you the infinity scarf. You know, there are so many types of infinity scarves. 
This happens to be a very large infinity scarf, but you can make your own infinity scarf. And I have made many infinity scarves. This happens to be one that I bought. But what you do is you take a rectangle scarf and you just tie the ends together and you have another infinity scarf. Uh, this happens to be a Picasso scarf and it is an infinity scarf. Put it right around your neck and if you like it tied around your neck as I've told you I like mine. Also, I heard from my daughter that she likes to take her infinity scarves and put them into a donut. And then you can drop it into your tote bag and you have your security blanket. How you do this is to just take your infinity scarf and twist it around and then twirl it around and make a donut. You know, I have a lot of other things to tell you about how you store your scarves, how you take care of your scarves. And before we go, and I think we're almost out of time, uh, be sure to take your scarves and get a pant hanger. And, you know, don't fold your scarves up and put them in a drawer because then you don't know what you have. You can't remember, but when you can see them, then you know what you have. And when you are traveling, just take a paper towel a cylinder and roll it up and put it right in your suitcase. Then when you get to your destination, your scarf is not all folded up with wrinkles. Um, there's just so many other things that I want to tell you, but I guess we'll have to wait until next week because I see that we're almost out of time. Uh, we actually are not having any time for questions and answers, but I promise next week I will take your answers. What I want you to do is to take some of the information that I've given you, uh, think about some of the ties that I have done, and try to think about maybe one or two of the most popular ties that you would want me to go over, but we will go over them next week, October the 7th uh, at three o'clock, and we'll go step by step. I will tell you about all of the different scarves. In the beginning, I'm going to ask what were the most popular scarves that you enjoyed seeing me do. So, Carolyn, I have exhausted the time. I don't know if anyone has any, I mean, anyone have a question that I can briefly answer? Um, just a couple of comments there. Um, it's, uh, I'm impressed, thank you, you've given my scarves a new life. Um, fabulous, you're a genius, love your presentation. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, that is certainly a sweet comment. I'll put that in my gratitude uh, journal. <laughs> and just remember, folks, if you want, because I can't remember all of them. I'm trying to hold in my head. <laughs> but um, I have the PDF file that Bobby so graciously allowed us to share with you. So my name is Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N. Carolyn at thecentercville.org. If you email me, I will send you that. And you can be practicing this week. Um, on any of your favorite ties. And um, if you don't remember, just call the center and say, some lady named Carolyn, please give me her email and I'll get it to you. It's fine. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. 
One quick question. How many scarves do you have? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering that. No, Carolyn, I don't really know. Uh, at one point uh, early on when I was writing my book, I actually, this was back in the days when you cataloged. <laughs> I cataloged all of my scarves of where I bought them, how much I paid for them, and, and when I bought them but our house burned down, so I lost a lot of scarves. Mm -hmm. And now I have collect, but two thirds of the scarves I have, people have given to me. That's lovely. So that's an easy thing. And you know, a scarf is your security blanket and it brings back such memories of when you wore it or the occasion. And it's just a, a wonderful collection to start. If you haven't started it, I'm asking you or inspiring you, I hope, to start a, a scarf collection. Sounds so great. I wish I could answer. Maybe that'll be a good New Year's resolution is to count my scarves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm going to Bobby send you all these uh, wonderful things in the chat. Sure, go ahead, please. Uh, Bobby, well, thank you. you. Thank you, you so sure. much. I really appreciate. Yep. I appreciate all of you attending. Okay. What do you think, Carolyn? I think that's a, a winner. I agree with Clay. So professional. And thank your daughter. It sounds like you had a great, um, what did they, we key grip had there. such a good time. <laughs> She is a good producer <laughs> telling me <laughs> what I should do and how I should do it. And she actually made so many wonderful suggestions of how I could show folding uh, on the table. Super, super.